greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship on this Lord's Day. And as we gather, I invite you to fill out the registration pad that you uh, see at the end of the pew toward the aisle and pass it to those who are sitting with you in the pew. Also, if you have a joy or a concern uh, to share with the congregation and have lifted in prayer, you can fill out one of these rectangular cards you see in front of you in the pew. And around the time of the children's moment, we'll ask one of the ushers to uh, collect them and bring them forward as you hold them up and uh, wave them high. Well, this is our blood, sweat, and tears weekend. And uh, uh, we had a, a great day yesterday with Rebuilding Together. And uh, it started at the Twin Peaks Senior Center uh, at uh, 7 o'clock and then uh, went through dinner at a, uh, at also at the, tween, uh, the Senior Center with a great spaghetti uh, dinner. And uh, we just uh, had a great time. So uh, if you were, oh, I'm going to wait one minute because I see somebody who was a part of it. <laughs> if, uh, coming in. If you um, were a part of uh, Rebuilding Together in any capacity, either through our church or some other way, please stand. Oh, stand. All right, thank you. Now, um, uh, and uh, we are we are honored to have uh, Alice uh, Walters here with us, and she's here almost every last Sunday of the month, uh, uh, coming with uh, the uh, Continuous Care Center at the hospital. And yesterday, um, she was one of the homeowners, uh, uh, and uh, we did not work on her house, but uh, another group did. So uh, Alice, um, it was good to see you there last night. And, oh, DB. Oh, you, you go by DB? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Oh, you're the last. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I got confused somewhere. Okay. So anyway, Dee. Dee. Um, so anyway, thank you to everybody, and then uh, today we have our blood drive, and uh, Cheryl, you have some words about that. Yes. So there. Year because the wait time was horrendous and there's no question about it. I, they were waiting, I think, three or four hours and that, oh. that's not acceptable. But, so I talked to our representative, Tony Holder. He says that it's much speeded up now, that you should be able to get through from the beginning to the actual end of the infusion, the whole thing, in uh, 45 minutes. Now, I'll believe it when I see it, so I'm not promising anything. But he did say something that I mentioned last year, and it, it will really make a difference, but it starts next month. Next month, you can go online on the day of the, uh, the blood uh, draw and fill out all that stuff at home and then come in. And I think that would make it, who knows, no more than 20, 30 minutes. So I did want to let you guys know if anybody who still wants to sign up for that 45 minutes, you know, there's, there's plenty of uh, room available. But um, uh, thank you all for um, the ones that did sign up and for the other ones. I'm hoping to see more of you. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Cheryl. And uh, Carol Stanley has an announcement. Uh, let us know. We're trying to get a count. Also, um, 
On May 20th, we will be celebrating 80 years of the Crestline Presbyterian Church, and the church will be closing. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, uh, Bill and I are two of the three people that will be uh, working on on uh, Bill on the service, and I will be helping with the meal. If you would be interested in helping with the closing meal, we'd like to be we could be 100 or 200 that day for that congregation. Please let me know. We like to make that special special day um, memorable in many ways. So. Uh, we're celebrating uh, 80 years, and I uh, hope you can join us for that service as well. The service is at 5 o'clock, and the dinner will follow. Okay. Thank you. And that's May 20th. All right. And I uh, have a couple of more, a couple more announcements. Uh, Joseph Jovrion, if you'll come on up, Joseph. And he has a, an announcement concerning his... Uh, Boy Scout project and uh, fundraising for his Eagle Scout project and fundraising. Uh, it's Joseph. I go here and I attend uh, uh, Boy Scout 355 over at Lutheran Church and I'm building my Eagle project. Hey, Joseph. Yeah. Sorry, I'm moving. <coughs> We're going to try and get up. Hi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so my name is Joseph Chilfreon. I go here and I'm also a member of Boy Scout Troop 55. I'm going to be doing my Boy Scout Eagle Project at the church here. It'll be a memorial garden down below on the hillside below the labyrinth. And if you uh, would like to talk about it or you'd like to help donate to it, I'll be all at the table outside of the service after the service. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Joseph. And Barry Smart has an announcement about uh, a uh, special day at the church. You, you may notice in your, in your bulletin that there is a flyer about our work day uh, that's coming up. We're going to clean up the exterior of the church, wake up the fine needle, do the leaf stuff like that. It's on May 19th, uh, and for more information, there's a flyer in your, along with your, your bulletin today. It's May 19th, uh, bring lunch, we'll have uh, the uh, beverages and one up to go along. Hats, gloves, and rakes is what we're going to need. We're going to get it cleaned up and handle it all in one day. Okay. So, thank you. Look forward to seeing you there. Thank you, Barry. So that's May 19th, uh, the day before May 20th, when we have the, uh, uh, the celebration of the, the life of the, the Crestline Presbyterian Church. Now, this coming, uh, this coming Saturday night, uh, at 6.30, well, doors will open at 6.30, and the performance is 7, at 7 o'clock. Um, uh, our Mission Action Team and Adelante Arts are teaming up to do a fundraiser for Hearts and Lives, and it's called Improv Insanity. And um, so this is a, a, an improv show uh, featuring, and you see a bull, you see a flyer uh, in your bulletin insert. Uh, in that flyer is a picture of uh, my, uh, my friend Maggie Gillespie and me. And uh, also Sean uh, Devine is in it and his sister Colleen who was uh, working with us yesterday for Rebuilding Together. And uh, Michelle Green and a few others. Um, so this is a, a night of uh, fun and uh, helping the community at the same time. Uh, and uh, it's here at the church, so please join us for, uh, for a good time and a way of helping out the community and particularly Hearts and Lives and its ministry in the community. And finally, our opening hymn uh, that, uh, today is um, if you are following along in the hymnal is hymn 510 and not 511. If you follow along in the hymnal and try to read the melody, sing the melody line, um, you'll be singing something different, <laughs> even though the words are the same. So, uh, An additional uh, change is uh, I did the bulletin this week. That's the reason for that mistake. And then I also left out communion. Um, and so, my apologies, but uh, um, right after the prayers of the people, we will have uh, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. All that said, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God.
Please stand if you're unable. And join me in the call of worship. In the wilderness, water brings life. In the word of God, the good news gives light. Our Savior nourishes everyone. Seek the Sabbath, O God, and give us yourself. Here is the water of life, the word that feeds, the food of eternity. Amen. Praise is mine, and it is all goodness. Indeed, let us worship God. Join me in the hymn number 510.
Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are God gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples.
Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody. scriptures once again, let us uh, pray to God asking help for uh, understanding and uh, praying the prayer written in the bulletin as the prayer for illumination. Come, Holy Spirit, that through your word we may be guided into the love of God for all the world. Amen. Now our scripture reading comes from First John, and First um, uh, John is is near the end of the Bible. It's not the go it's not the Gospel according to John, but one of three books that are called First, Second, and Third John. Uh, second and Third John seem to be short little letters. Uh, 1 John, though we call it an epistle of John, seems to be more like a sermon or even a commentary on the gospel according to John. And in the fourth chapter, we have these words. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected, meaning completed, in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify to the Father, or that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. God, our love, has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers and sisters, are liars. For those who do not love brother or sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God, whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us pray. 
Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I might not be sure what to say about love. Now, I know at the beginning of a sermon on love, that might not fill you with a lot of confidence. But what can we say? What can we say about love? We might jump to a different place in the Bible. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. You know, things like that. Those are beautiful words from the Apostle Paul. But what can we say about love? One thing we could say is that it, it seems pretty simple. I don't know about you, but often I have a pretty positive attitude toward love. You might, you know, we might even say that sometimes you know, we love love. <clears throat> but maybe it's not that easy, not that simple, this love. You see, love is, love is from God. And 1 John not only says that, but says that in, in this is love. Not that we love God, but that God loved us. God gave, loved us and gave his son, sent his son as a, an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Not that we love God, but that God loved us. Anybody feel like you just love everybody? Oh, wow. You're a little more self-savvy than most people. You know? I mean, I feel like I love everybody. But, but the thing is, well, uh, in uh, Dostoevsky's brother Kar Karamazov, um, Alexei Kar Karamazov is uh, is living in a monastery, he's talking to a senior cleric there who, who tells him that it's easy to love humanity. He says, the difficult part is loving individuals. <laughs> Once I was in a, uh, uh, I was in a, a discussion in college at our uh, Methodist Presbyterian campus ministry group uh, and our Wednesday night dinner and the discussion that follows. And the, the Presbyterian campus minister was asking us, uh, what makes it difficult to love people or what makes some people you know, unlovable? And people uh, shared some ideas and there were bits of silence. And then somebody said, when somebody smells bad, And then we talked about that. <coughs> you know, isn't that right? Don't you have a difficult time feeling positively towards somebody when that person smells bad? I mean, just, it's kind of the way it is. And it, it's difficult. To love, it's easy to love everybody. It's difficult to love people in flesh and blood. Because flesh and blood people smell bad. 
Now, it might be our bodies that smell bad. We might smell bad in, in kind of the scent, but sometimes, sometimes it's what we, people do that smells bad. Or how people look that smells bad. Sometimes it's what people wear that smells bad to us. Sometimes it's choices they make. Sometimes it's what people believe, you know, religiously or, or politically or morally, that smells bad to us. This, in this is love. Not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. I wonder if my sin smells bad to God. Yet still, God came in Jesus and loved me and loved you. And everybody else out there, even those people we can't smell because they're so far away. See, It's difficult to love people nearby sometimes. But that's the only way to really love, is in flesh and blood, tangibly. As the sermon title says, all love is local. even if it might not be. God loves us locally by having sent Jesus. And what God loves us locally in giving us love and loving us so that we can love each other. It happens in flesh and it happens in blood, it happens together. Now, last, uh, last week I told you about uh, Desmond Tutu uh, uh, preaching to a, a group of seminary uh, graduates or, or graduating seniors from the seminary and saying, you know, in the last three years, You've studied a lot of church history and Bible and theology and ethics and, and, and all sorts of things. But I want to tell you, you know nothing. It says you know nothing unless you know that you are beloved of God. We might turn that just a little bit and say, You've grown up loving and hearing the need to love, hearing the call to love, the instruction to love. But you can't really love God's way unless you know that you are beloved of God. At first, first John says that the love we have for each other comes from the love God has for us. And from, from knowing that love and accepting that love, it's then that we can, can share it. Beloved, let us love one another.
First John says, in truth and action. Action toward those around us who, like us, want deeply, deeply to love and to be loved. We not only are given love to share, but we are given love, we are given an arena in which what we all have in common is the desire to love and to be loved. Now, I, you might wonder how I know that. Well, I did not survey the, is it around the 7 billion now, or ish, or something, uh, people? I didn't survey everybody. But Martin Luther King Jr. said, I, when I know my own heart, I know the heart of everyone. And I know that deep, deep within, I have the desire to love and to be loved. What about you? And it's the same for everyone. From from the grocer to the garage mechanic, from the teacher to the telemarketer, even to the terrorist deep down. I know some of you think the telemarketer is the real terrorist. <laughs> from the homeless to the Hiltons, to doctors and lawyers, to carpenters, to couch potatoes, to type A personalities, to prostitutes, to police, to people of various colors and various religious beliefs. We all want to love and to be loved. Here's the power to love. And this is love. Not that we love God, but that God loved us. He gave, gave, sent his only son, or sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. As an atoning sacrifice. You know, The, the sacrifice in, in the Bible is the central act of worship. It's the offering. The most important things in the Christian life are worship and love. And actually, in our Presbyterian Reformed tradition in Christianity, if we, if we really believe that, the, um, that our chief end as human beings is to glorify God and enjoy God forever, worship and love are the most important things for anybody. And in Jesus, God comes to be with us in flesh and blood and pull us into that life of worship and love. To suck us into that worship and love, to be caught up in all what really is God and who God is. For God is, I think you can finish it with me, for God is love. Thanks be to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Let us stand for this.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you that indeed you love us and that you work in us a knowledge of that love that we may love one another and love you. We pray, O oh God, that you will ever equip us with that love to encourage us in your grace that we may live out your character and your life in the world. We pray that you will delight us with your goodness and that you will fill us with your grace. It is in that grace and that love that we lift to you those about whom we are concerned. We pray, O oh God, for, for Brian Allen for Anna Murray, for Hugh Miller, Reese Holzer, and Janet Fry. We pray for the, uh, the, the Murray family and the passing of Anna's father, and also uh, for uh, the Rose family and the passing of Arlene, and the, the Welsh family and the, patch, and the passing of uh, Patrick Jr. We pray, O oh God, for Rick Ford and for Claire Marr. Rick, who's uh, been diagnosed with uh, stage uh, four cancer, and Claire, who's been diagnosed with pneumonia. And we lift up Elizabeth Marr as she can, uh, continues with her uh, her health struggles. We lift up uh, my mother, Ann Stanley, O oh God, as uh, with her pneumonia and my father with his uh, his cancer and chemotherapy. We pray, O oh God, for so many who are on our hearts and minds, and we ask that you will fill us with hope and joy, that you will bless our prayers, and that you will encourage us with your grace. We pray for this world in which we live, and we pray that love may indeed come to prevail. Indeed, in Christ it has prevailed. It's just that we don't know it or act like it yet. We pray, O oh God, that you will bring it all to fruition. This we pray in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Will those who are serving come to the table, please? <coughs> to love one another 
and love the world that God loves. So, our Savior invites all who trust in him to come and share in this feast, whatever your denomination or your strength, to come and feast upon God's love with one another. Let us pray. Great and gracious and glorious God, fill us with your grace, fill us with your hope, nourish us as we partake of the bread and the cup in faith, as we partake with you and with one another and with believers in all times and places. Lord, our tradition says that uh, at this table we are lifted into the heavenly realm. Indeed, lift us into that realm and transform us and renew us so that we may live your ways in the world. Lord, you are great and gracious and glorious. And we pray, O oh God, that by this meal, we may further learn to live in and live out that grace. To live and live out that greatness. To live in and live out that gloriousness that reflects your glory. This we pray in the name of Christ, whose life and death and resurrection and ascension we celebrate with one another at this table. And we pray the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And we lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus sat at table with disciples, and he took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, poured out in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. The Apostle Paul, giving this account, says, Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. As we uh, partake, I uh, call your attention to the fact that uh, gluten-free uh, bread is in the center of the bread plate in the, the glass cup. We will be practicing by a method of by method of intention. So I invite you to uh, come forward. The actually the ushers will um, in, invite your rows to come forward uh, a few at a time and uh, you'll come forward and, and partake. In, in the event you would prefer not to uh, dip your bread in the cup, there are uh, smaller cups that you can use.
Let us pray. Eternal God, equip us with everything good. Manifestations of your grace and your love, that we may be gracious and we may love. We may delight in your great care for ourselves and for the whole creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us stand for our closing hymn. Let us share that peace with one another.